Welcome back guys. Today we are checking out another Pro Caliber. This time it is the 9.6. So this is kind of the most popular version that will be out there. This one is the navy colored. Still has that bold print on the top if you can see that. But it's kind of like a clear coat instead of such a solid matte nautical that the Marlin 5 or Marlin 7 would have. There is not a huge price jump between this and the 9.5, but you do get significant part upgrades. Notably, I will say it still does not come with a dropper post, which is 50-50. Again, if you're looking for this style of bike, I think you won't get a dropper post, but even the pros are starting to put a dropper post on, so it is surprising. Maybe they're looking for a lighter weight one instead of a cheap one is undecided. Upgrade time for the wheels. You've gone from the standard Covey TLR to the Covey Comp. So not a huge improvement, but overall this will be a slightly lighter wheel, should add some more strength and is still a tubeless ready option. Same tires as the 9.5 with the team issue. XR2 from Bontrega, so these are tubeless ready right from the box and a relatively fast rolling speed with low resistance. Forkwise, you've gone to the RockShox Recon Gold. So not major differences here, really but that big change is now that little attachment on the top there. Instead of going to a turnkey, it is a remote lockout. So up on the handle, you actually get a two button switch, one to engage and one to release. It's very soft touch, it's very easy to do. And if you've never rode a bike with lockout, when it works, it's fantastic. Although they tend to take a lot of maintenance and that the key tends to fail or not become as reliable as it once did. As well, check out these accent points Trek has done. These grips are only available that I can see with this bike, matching hubs front and rear as well. Still at air fork, so it's gonna be lightweight, powerful, and room to fit up to 120 mil if you're gonna start getting some crazy descents. Up in the brakes, we also see an improvement from the MT200s to the MT400s front and rear. So you are just gonna get significantly better stopping power with that. Overall, you will not need to change these, even if you end up with some more aggressive descents for this style of bike. Drivetrain wise, big improvement to the XT stuff. So durability is gonna last a lot longer. It's gonna be a little quieter and a little bit more efficient. As well, that front chain ring has increased its clearance to a 36 tooth. So I'm not really sure why that is on this model, but yeah, it should be the same frame. Something about something has changed to allow that. Obviously with XT shifting, it's just gonna work much faster and shave a ton of weight off. Like I said, the frame should be pretty much exactly the same. Still has that ISO speed, so still will be a comfy ride. Even without a dropper post, you'll be able to handle the trails no problem. So although not major changes overall, the few changes they have done have improved it from kind of an it's hard to say entry level bike when you're looking at a 9.5. Room for improvements in the 9.5. Very little room for improvements here. Really just room to make it your own, whether you're going with bigger 2.4 inch wide tires or a dropper post, or maybe you could upgrade these wheels once again so that they become a super lightweight option into carbon. And you can get these bikes down to like 23, 24 pounds like the 9.7 is. Again, super nice looking bike. I don't think anyone's gonna have issues with the way it looks. The lettering is bold. It is a good looking bike. Pretty much anyone can ride this thing. It is race ready, but it's not the most aggressive geometry I've ever sat on in my entire life. The Pro Caliber 9.6 is definitely designed for that race wannabe or more off-road trail person than what I think a gravel grinder would be. Going to XT drivetrain, you will get some more durability out of it, so you will see a little bit of advantage there, but obviously with the lockout from fork and the higher end from fork and brakes, you're gonna see more noticeable improvements on the trail than on a gravel type ride. Still doable, still obviously, great, but if you're doing majority gravel or long rides, the 9.5 will probably be a better value to you. Whereas if you're gonna be doing more trail and king of mountains, this one off-road will be a much better choice. All right, I hope this helped you out. It is a nice looking bike and pretty hard to come by still. They're starting to show up places, but yeah, check them out and thanks for watching.